Hello everybody. In this screencast, we're gonna see how we can set up an Android project so that we can make these HTTP connections, okay? Making requests to services, online services. So how, to do that, there is a uh, traditional way, which is the, the basic way of doing this, is where we actually build the whole stack, meaning we open an internet connection, we request, uh, send the request over that connection, receive a response, parse the response, and so on but that would require us to build a lot of code and to, instead of doing that uh, uh, what I'm going to show is how we could use a library to do most of this repetitive work for us okay now one important thing to consider is that if you are going to use the internet your application needs to ask for the internet permission and where do you ask for the internet permission in the Android project we look at the manifest. So there is, this is your Android project. If you make sure that you are, you pick Android and under the manifests, there is the Android manifests. When you go here under the manifest above the application, you open a, a new uh, element and you saw, type uses permission, uses permission. And then what's the permission? It's the internet permission, which is this one. And then you close the, the tag. And basically that is the app is asking for the internet permission. This is this means that this app is going to use the internet. Okay, so that's the first step if you are going to use the internet. Meaning, if you are going to make these internet connections, you need to ask for the internet permission. That's one. The other thing is to use a library. The library that I'm going to use is a very easy library to use, and that library allows us to create uh, connections, receive requests. Uh, pass parameters in the requests and so on you know so basically to add a library to your um, to your project we need first to identify which library we want to add so basically what we are going to discuss is okay http and okay http is a, a, a is a very nice library that enables you to uh, make uh, efficient internet connections it's it's very very easy to use and uh, to 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 uh, to get it you just go to square.github.io forward slash okay http and I'll post that link in the in the video and so on. Um, so basically, that's okay. HTTP. When you when you go here, we are trying to find how to add it to our uh, library. So if you scroll uh, to add it to our project, if you scroll all the way down, you could see that you can add it using. Uh, this is the name of the library. I'll copy it. So this is the this is the name of the library. All of this is the name of the library, and then this is the version of the library. So I'm gonna copy this, okay? And I'll show you where I'm going to add it. I'll copy this. And then I'll go to my Android project. If you look at the build, there are two build gradles and we are gonna look at the one which is the module app. And you could see here, these are all libraries that are already integrated in the uh, in your project. I want to add another implementation. Okay, and I'm going to add, paste the, uh, the string that I uh, copied. And that basically that string identifies that I'd like to add okay HTTP. And basically I will do sync now and this adds that library to my project. So it's going to download the library from the internet and then integrate it into my project, okay? This is one way of doing this. So let me cut this to show you. Another way of doing this is to go to the app, right click, and you look at module settings, right? And then under module settings, you look at uh, dependencies. And then under dependencies, under the app, I wanna add, what do I wanna add? I wanna add the library dependency and it asks you what's the name of the library. I'll just paste it here, which is the name of the library is this. So basically, I can just do something like this, right? So basically, this is the name of the library, and I click on search. And basically, it's going to give you the library, and it searches for it. And let's see which version we want to install. It's 4.9.0, and here are all the versions. And I'm going to pick 4.9.0, and that's the stable version. And click OK, and click OK again. And you could see that it automatically added this for me in here. All right, so basically that's one way of, another way of uh, integrating the library into the project. So basically I integrated the library, I wanna use it, right? So basically to use it, we will look at that in, in detail in the next couple of videos, but now I wanna use this library. Now, what you also have to consider, so the first step is to add the internet permission. The second step is to integrate the library or to add the library into your Gradle file. And then you have to think about something here that when you make these internet connections, you cannot make them in the main thread or the in the main uh, uh, in the UI thread. You can't do that because these are long uh, operations that will take a long time, and they are going to hang. If you make them as a synch synchronous calls, they are going to take a lot of time, and they are going to make the main thread really, really busy with servicing the internet connection. 
So the other option is to create another thread and do that. The beautiful thing about using a library is that the library takes care of um, running these requests asynchronously and takes care of creating the thread, uh, creating the communication between the thread and the main thread. It takes care of all of this. Basically, all you are doing is creating a request. So let's see. So I added the library. Now, this, this documentation of OKHttp OK has something called recipes. If you look at recipes, it shows you that the recipes, meaning different kinds of ways of using the library. And if you scroll at the top here, there is a way of making a synchronous get. I don't want to use synchronous get because synchronous get, let's try the synchronous get. So let's do that. I'm just going to, usually what, it, what happens is that you start by creating a client. So I'll do that. That's the internet client. I'll go here at the top. I'll just create an internet client. Now it needs to integrate to uh, import these OK client. So I have the client. Very nice. So that's the HTTP client. Whenever you want to make a, 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 a connection, you are going to use that client. And then if you look here, that client, you build a request. So this is a request. Go back here. I'll go here. And you build a request. You create a request. Here is a request. And basically, the request needs a URL. So basically, let's say it needs this URL, and you build the request. So that's your request. Now, what you're going to do is client dot, and you make a new call. And that new call will actually create a request. So now if you go here, uh, you could see here new call and execute and get that gets you a response. So if we do this, if we do this, if we use that uh, client to execute that request, right, and it returns back a response, and it's not happy because most probably this throws an exception. So now I will surround it with try catch and basically it's, it, it, it creates an exception. So now if we do this, what is expected to happen is that the the uh, the app will run but then the app is going to print in the log that you should not call this request in the main thread because when you do a new call and you pass it a request and you execute the call this means that you are running it synchronously see here it's a synchronous call and synchronous calls this means that it's going to run in the main thread and you don't want to make the internet connection in the main thread you want to do that in a child thread so now if we run this and we look at the locket okay so something happened but then if you scroll all the way up and it tells you that unable to start activity fatal la, 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 and then it says here network network on main thread exception so basically the operating system is telling you you cannot run a network call on the main thread all right so that's caused an issue you see here it crashed it caused an issue to solve this problem either you create your asynchronous task you create an asynchronous task and run this inside the asynchronous task and that would solve this problem right in the do in the background it solved this problem or i could just use the library the library has a mechanism of creating an asynchronous call which is a call that does not run on the main thread you just enqueue so basically here you are executing that will run in in the in the main thread or you could do it like this i could say client dot new call which is the request and then i will say enqueue so basically the enqueue which means that this request, the new request that you created, is going to get enqueued into the processing queue or, or the ch child queue. And then there is a callback. The callback is to send you back a response when there is a response. So basically, there is, it requires a callback. So I'll say new callback. All right, here it is. And boom. And basically, if you look at the callback, it has two methods. One of them is on failure and then on response. Very nice. So there is an on failure and an on response very straightforward so now when you look here you will see that they have an on failure so let's do the on failure just print the e, the, the stack trace e dot uh, print stack trace just to do the on failure and then the on response we have to check to first to see um we have to check to see if it's successful or no and and so on right so uh, so basically and you can get access so basically you could see here you get access to the response so basically you create a request and you get access to a response so we can get the body of the response and so on. So basically, if you look here, um, we can get the response body like this. So I can copy this code here. This is how you get the response body. Here is the response body. So now I can go here and can press option enter. And here we are. That's the response body, right? I could also check to see if response body or response dot and then is successful, right? See, there is an is successful, right? Then if it's successful, I'll do something, right? So I can do that. So basically, I could say if successful, I will uh, probably let's do this. I can go here and do this. I'll get the body if it's successful. All right. 
And do I am I able to get the response code? Yes, the response. I could do that here. Response. Response dot. Yeah, you can get the status. Get. You can get the status code. Yes, you can get the status code. But anyhow, you can see if it's successful, you will do this. We'll follow this. Now, if it's not successful, they throw an exception. Uh, uh, we can look at the exception later. But then otherwise, you can get the headers and print the headers and you can print the body and so on. So basically, if you go here, once you get the body, I could do um, uh, log D and I could print the body. I could say response body dot string. So basically, you see here string that gets you the body first as a string. OK, so if we run this. Uh, okay, so let's run it. If we run it, and here we go, it's printing. You see here the on response, it did print the response that came back, right? So basically, this page returns back something. This page or this link has this kind of response that should come back. Very nice, so it works. Let me just show you something quick as we are here. So we made the request and we made it asynchronously, and this new the callback function is is the is what gets called back after the uh, the child thread runs the creates the internet connection and then it comes back with the response of the internet connection it actually needs the callback so that it either is on failure or on response okay so let's show you for example what happens if i change it from https to http okay so if i change it from https to http technically what's going to happen is that the, the secure the secure tunnel between the server and the client now is going to be insecure meaning that this is clear text so i'll go to this http now when i run this okay and it's not coming back you see that whatever it was printing before it's not printing it anymore and if we scroll a little bit here you'll see that there was an exception that happened and it's called the clear text communication exception not permitted by network security policy. So now this is a problem because now you are trying to make an HTTP an HTTP request and Android, the latest Android uh, by default does not allow clear text communication. Now, if we want to allow clear text communication, we have to explicitly identify that in the manifest. So if you go back to the manifest and in here, I will say clear, you could say here, for example, here it is, uses clear text traffic, press enter and it's true. So now when we run it now, so that's in the manifest, we just add this to the application tag, right? And we run it again. And then we get our clear text here and it's coming back. All right, very nice. So that's to show you the, um, the uh, if you want to use HTTP, right? Okay, so let's keep it HTTPS. Now, another thing I would like to show you here is the idea of the body so basically this body what happens is that when the re request is received when actually the request is received um uh, you get a body now if you change the body into a string once you cannot change it into a string again so the safest way is to save it into a string variable but let's say i would like to take the same body and s basically what happens is this body is coming in as stream of bits or stream of bytes that are coming in and then basically if you change it to a string this means that you have to read all the stream of bytes that is received and then it gets transformed into a string it's called an input stream so it's an input stream of bytes that's coming in you have to read all of it and then you change it to a string if you try to change it to a string again this means that you will have to go and read the, the input stream again but the problem is that you already read all the input stream you're not going to receive any more bytes so now you can only do this operation dot string once so let's do it again okay so i'm doing it twice now once twice and then I, you get an exception. So you see here the first time it did print, right? And then you try to do it again here on this line and you get an exception. And the exception is mainly because you are trying to reread. It's an illegal state operation, meaning because that's mainly because the buffer, you have a buffer of, of input bytes that are coming in. And when you do the dot string operation, the dot string operation reads all that buffer and change it into a string. Now the buffer is empty. When you try to do an on dot string again on empty buffer, this is what happens. So basically the safest way, if you need that uh, body and you need it multiple times, you just say string and you could say, for example, this is the body equals response body dot string. That's something to keep, to keep in mind. And uh, that's, that's something to keep in mind. And you have the body. Now when you run it, you can print it as many times as you want. Log D 
and we could do the body it doesn't matter it's just a variable now you are not going to trigger the dot string operation again so here it is we can print it twice and here we go okay here we are another thing to pay attention to is that the question is that the this is all managed by the the library right so now the question i have is that is this running in the main thread or it's running in the child thread so let's try so let's how to do that i'll just do the thread library dot and i can get the current thread that's running this and i could say for example get id so basically i can do that okay so now that's the id of the thread and i can say the log d and this is the thread id okay and here we are so that's the thread id I'm going to print it here. Okay. Let me also print it here. So basically here is the main thread, right? This is on the main thread. This is the on create. That's the ID of the main thread. This is the main thread ID, right? This is the main thread, main thread ID. And then this is the thread ID of whatever is coming back here. So let's run and see if they are both the same. This means that the, the callback, not the actual network operation, the callback is running in the main thread. If they are the same, if they are not the same, this means that the callback is running in the chi in a child thread. Okay, so you have to be careful how you change the UI in these functions if they are not the same. So let's try this. Okay, let me remove this, these, these, uh, these calls. Let me remove these printed stuff to the log so that we could see this more clearly. Okay, and let's do the demo okay so you could see that the main thread the id is to two and the when in the on response the id is one is 1511 so what does that mean this means that these methods these methods are in the child thread so now if you want to change the layout or do something you have to do it in the uh, main thread so th this means that you have to tunnel it back to the main thread and you can do that through uh, using the handler or using some sort of uh, there is also run on main run on UI thread you can use that method called run on UI thread new runnable for example and you post whatever you want to put whatever you want to put here because the problem is that if you try to change the UI if you're trying to change the UI inside this method, you are not in the main thread. See, because of this, it tells you that the thread ID is 1511. You are not in the main thread. You have to change it in uh, the main thread. So let's, um, we'll look at how we can do that in the, in the next couple of videos, but just keep in mind that uh, this is not the actual, these functions are not running in the main thread. So when the, even when they come back in the callback, you see the thread ID is not the same. So this means it's not running in the main thread. Please let me know if you have any questions and in the next videos we will look in more detail into this library and look at how to pass parameters, how to receive data and so on. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.